Somebody once said, if someone hands you a million dollars, best you become a millionaire, so you get to keep the money. I'm telling you, success doesn't want to hang around an incompetent person. That's the problem with winning the lottery. The lack of self-development to be able to master it and keep it. And now the fortune is bigger than the person, rather than the person being bigger than the fortune. If you're a parent, use that as a challenge to grow personally. Use the challenge of parenting to grow. See what you can become. One ancient writer said this, Here are some reassuring words. God's arm is not short. Aren't those reassuring words? God's arm is not short. You can't think of anything more pitiful than a God with a short arm. Poor God, his arm's too short. He can't reach all the way. Can't reach out to all of us. This writer said, no, be reassured. God's arm is not short. He can reach all the way and he can reach everybody. Shouldn't that be said of every father, of every mother? They can reach all of their children. They can reach all the way. They don't lack stories and illustrations. They don't lack wisdom and power. And the only way you can become that kind of parent, the only way you can keep up that process is by personal development, by becoming better than you are, stronger than you are, wiser than you are, becoming, becoming, growing, so that your investment grows. As your children grow, you grow. Your power grows, your influence grows, your wisdom grows, your command of the language grows. You see, that's what's challenging. To be involved in a situation that makes you grow. If that situation is success, keep growing to be bigger than your fortune. If that situation is failure, keep growing until you're bigger than the problem. Keep growing, keep becoming, keep doing it until. Now, there are two qualities that can increase your chances of success. Two very important qualities. Number one, patience. Number two, persistence. Let's talk about patience for a moment. Patience is what? Learning to handle the passing of time. Now, once you've had an appetite for success and you start going for it, now you've got to learn to handle the passing of time. Here's why. It takes time. It takes time to build a corporate work of art. It takes time to build a symphony orchestra with flawless music and harmony that sends you on flights of ecstasy. To be remembered long after the orchestra has shut down and the lights have gone out. It takes time to put harmony together. It takes time to build a life. It takes time to build an enterprise. It takes time to get through school. It takes time to develop and grow. So give your enterprise time. Give your business time. If you're in management, give your people time. If you're a parent, give your kids time. Don't be too short, too quick. Give them time. Now, not forever, but time. It takes time. Here's the ultimate challenge. You've got to have patience with yourself. It takes time to make changes in habit and discipline. It takes time to correct old errors in judgment and to finally give up old blame and pick up new responsibility. I'm telling you, it took me some time. I used to blame the government and blame taxes and blame the company and blame the marketplace. It took me a long time to give that up. That was a pretty comfortable list to explain my empty bank account, pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank, not doing well, embarrassed by my situation. It took time to give that up and only blame myself. That took a while. So have patience with yourself, number one. And number two, while you're dealing with the passing of time, number two is to keep doing it. Be persistent. Be tenacious. Keep doing it until, as long as you are patient and persistent, it's hard to elude success. As long as you maintain patience and persistence, tenacity, there's only one person, just one person that will draw the line between success and failure. One person, and that person is you. So be patient, be persistent. 
You need both patience and persistence together. And here's why. Lack of patience is probably the worst enemy of ambition. While your ambition keeps growing, keeps moving, keeps looking for new ways to succeed, impatience tends to grow frustrated. Impatience won't allow for persistence. Impatience wants to give up. Impatience calls discouragement failure. But your ambition won't let you give up so easily, not if you're persistent. What others may call failure, ambition calls a learning opportunity, a chance to make adjustments along the charted course to success. Ambition knows something else too. Ambition knows that the longer the achievement is in coming, the more valued it is. So let me give you a few aspects of patience, some examples that might help illustrate just how valuable it is. There are six aspects of patience, and here's number one. Knowing when an opportunity is right and when more preparation is needed. Let's say you're opening up a restaurant specializing in fresh seafood. You're all excited to get going, get the money coming in instead of it all going out. You're all excited. So because you're all excited, you want to open early. Your impatience gets the best of you. And so you do open before your scheduled grand opening. Customers start coming in. They're all excited about this new great restaurant. And everybody wants some fresh seafood. They're all ordering fresh seafood from the menu. But now you panic. You haven't got any. You're not ready. The fresh seafood shipment won't come in for a week. Impatience has just killed the restaurant. Now let's say you've got a great new product that's scheduled to come out on the market in the next several months. Everything's going according to plan, so you start planning your ads, start planning big public relations events. You're so sure that it's going to happen that you set a date. The engineers told you that the product's not ready, but you're sure it will be. You start planning everything, invite lots of people, influential people, buyers of your product. You're so excited that you went ahead without the product actually being done. Come the week of the grand unveiling, the engineers come to you and say it still doesn't work. Your impatience just lost you credibility in the marketplace. That's number one. Be patient in knowing the difference between when the opportunity is right and when more work needs to be done. Here's number two. Remain alert even if opportunity doesn't come right away. Make sure that your patience allows you to keep your eyes open and ready for opportunity. Keep looking. Be patient. Number three. Keep preparing for opportunities even if there's a delay. Even if things aren't going just the way you think they should, keep your disappointments at bay and keep getting ready for opportunities. Be prepared. Always be prepared. Don't let impatience allow you to give up. Number four in patience. Take the little setbacks in stride. Take the little successes in stride. Don't let small disappointments discourage you. Don't let the little successes delude you. Avoid the emotional roller coaster that will always, always disrupt your plan. Number five, if you're waiting on the decisions of others, be patient. You cannot control the decision-making abilities of others. You cannot control their timing. If your project was to come up before the board in one meeting and time ran out, and they moved your project to the top of the agenda for the next meeting, be patient. Don't be frustrated about what you have no control over. And number six, take a vacation from your ambition. If you've been working day after day, week after week, month after month without a break, take a vacation from your ambition. The patient person, secure in their ambition, knows that the drive and ambition will still be there, even after some time off. As a matter of fact, with some time off, the ambition will have a stronger pull than ever when you come back to it. Persistence is patience in action. Persistence is creative, always looking for new opportunities. Persistence is courageous, it doesn't give in to fear. Persistence is hopeful, it doesn't let discouragement through the door. Persistence is positive, it keeps you on track with your plans and your goals. And the last thing that persistence is, is cheerful.
not gloomy, cheerful. Persistence knows that gloom and depression and disappointments waste energy. Cheerfulness creates it. Patience and persistence are both required for success.